Income tax 2023-2024. Earned income tax credit the EIC with one qualifying child tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because you're supporting an entire generation with income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because... Apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problems using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point. Adam Taxman, just trying to avoid a dang tax man. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We're starting as a single filer, no dependents, W-2 income at the 100000 to start with. Standard deduction, 13850 getting to the taxable income. The bottom line of the income statement, part of the income tax formula, 86150, which we can double check to our formula format and Excel, 100,000 minus the 13,850, getting us to the 86,150. We then have the tax calculated on page two of the form 1040, and that is the 14,266. We're focused once again on the earned income tax credit, which is a credit that more than any other credit is the first thing that should come to mind when we're using the tax system, not as a way to collect taxes, but as a welfare or safety net type of program, which is why it's down here in the payments section as a credit, as opposed to up top in the tax and credits. Remember, and just as a general overview, credits similar to deductions in that they're both good, but... If you were to get a dollar of deduction, then it would reduce the net income on the first page, which will typically be good for taxes, but you will not get the full dollar of benefit because it will be dependent on your tax bracket in terms of the impact of that dollar. But if you were to get the credit of a dollar, you should get the full amount of benefit, whether it's a credit up top here or in the payments section, if you have the taxable income in order to cover it. But if you don't have the tax, the, the tax, not the taxable income, the tax liability, which is generated from the taxable income, but if you don't have any tax liability, then the credits up top here and the tax and credits will typically not give you a benefit because they're not gonna take your tax liability below zero because then we're not really talking about taxes anymore, are we? We're talking about a welfare or benefit program. Whereas the payments section, if we have the credit down here, it could take the tax liability below zero, resulting in a, quote, refund, which isn't really a refund. It's part of a welfare or kind of benefit program. The two major credits down here, which are commingled in many ways, is going to be, and that's because the children are often tied into the calculation of both these credits, are going to be the child tax credit or the additional child tax credit and the earned income tax credit, our main point of focus being the earned income tax credit at this time. Now, you will recall that in the prior presentation, we discussed that you can get the earned income tax credit with no children, but uh, it's going to go up significantly or have the potential to go up significantly if we add children, one to three children, more than three will no longer have any impact on the calculation of the earned income tax credit. So now we're going to focus in on one uh, child and we'll look at the range here. So notice the maximum credit then is going to be 3995 Once again, that is no matter the filing status, single or married, which at, at leads us to the questions as to, well, what if two people got married 
and they both were in the situation where they were getting a $3,995 credit before they got married. What would happen like after they got married kind of question. We'll, we'll look at that. Uh, but it's also a little bit deceiving in terms of the maximum income level at $46,560 because it's not like you can earn up to $46,550 and still get a maximum credit of $3,995. This is when the credit expires. It's done at that point. So then we also want to ask the question of how high can we go to get the maximum credit before it starts going back down in terms of income level. Also, we have the married filing joint income threshold, which again is nowhere near double the single or head of household threshold, right? So that, that also once again leads to the question of, well, what if two people get married? Are they going to have a substantial marriage uh, penalty kind of thing <laughs> if 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 they were getting the earned income tax credit which is kind of an unusual outcome that you wouldn't you know really expect uh the law to be drafted to do it might be an un unintentional consequence or something i don't know but we'll take a look at it. it's kind of interesting all right so let's say so obviously if they're making one hundred they they're not going to be qualifying for the earned income tax credit we're gonna have to lower the income they're gonna have to move out of beverly hills probably and then we're gonna no more 90210 uh and we're gonna go back on over here and and say let's bring the income down and if i look at my tables over here the question is this comes from the form 1040 instructions i'm gonna add a child and so then I'm going to look at the income thresholds if they're single or I'm looking head of household in this case and they add a child. So I'm, I'm looking for when is it going to go up to that 3,995. So if I look at the income, do, 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 we can say Dude, it's going up there around here. So they can get, they have to get their income up to 11,750 about in order to max out the credit. And then, and then the credit will actually go down as they have more income beyond that point. So let's check that out. So I'm going to say, all right, what, what, what did I say it was? I just forgot already. Uh, uh, 11,000. Let's start with, with 11,000. Let's start with 10,000. 10,000 on the income. And I'm going to add a child this time. And so we're going to say head of household. It's going to most likely the child's going to boost them up from single to head of household. And remember, that's a significant benefit in and of itself, which only happens with that one child. In other words, what's the child going to do in terms of tax benefit? Well, it's going to possibly increase the standard deduction if we move to head of household. But that might not be much of a benefit given the fact that, that our income is quite low and I might, I might already be below the threshold already. Uh, and then if I go to page two, we also could have an impact on the tax calculation. So let me put, put it back to 100,000 so we could see it. So we could say 100,000 and page two, you have your calculation of the taxes based on these tax brackets. You know, these tax brackets will typically be more favorable if we change to head of household. So let's keep it at 100,000 first and then I'll change it to head of household. So now we're going to go to do it, single to head of household, boom, and then boom. And so now we have different uh, tax rates. However, that still might not be vastly beneficial to people that are under the threshold where they don't have any earned income to clear the standard deduction. What really is going to matter then in that case is what's happening with the credit situation. All right, so let's add a, a dependent now. So we have a dependent, we'll start off with Sam, and then we'll just add generic dependent after that. And so we're gonna say 0101, let's say 20, social security, we're gonna say uh, is gonna be uh, oh, uh, 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 something like that. And then we're gonna say then the, okay, so we added the dependent, so if they were now they would be moving from single to head of household, there's the dependent. We're going to say they qualify for the child tax credit. That's one of the big benefits with uh, the dependent. Or if they didn't qualify for that, the other credit. If we keep it at 100,000, then we can also see that there's a change to the standard, uh, the, the standard deduction. So that's a big benefit if there's income for that. And then we have a change in the tax rates 
And then we have this 2000 child tax credit. Of course, we don't have any earned income tax credit at this point in time because they make a significant amount of income. Let's change the income now and say, okay, what if the income was down to like 10,000? We're gonna say 10,000 of income and go back on over. Now, of course, we still have the head of household and so on and so forth. We still have this bigger standard deduction, but that's not really that important because my I would have gotten to zero no matter, even if I was on the single status because I don't have enough income to clear it. And the tax tables don't really matter at that point because again, I don't have any taxable income to apply the more favorable tax tables to. I don't have the 2000 child tax credit up top because it's been uh, wiped out because it, my tax liability would be going below zero. But I do possibly have, as we talked about in a prior presentation, part of the child tax credit called the additional child tax credit, the refundable portion. So that is linked to the child and also the earned income credit here, which also basically is linked to the child. Now it's not totally maxed out. The max for one child is 3,995. So then obviously if you were below that amount, there's incentive to try to boost the income up to the maximum. People might try to add other income, you know, which again is what the IRS is skeptical of because they're trying to incentivize people to have earned income, which usually is like W-2 income. Now, how, how high does it, 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 how low can the income go to still maximize it with one child uh, head of household filing status? We could, we could say it could go to this 11.8. So 11.8. So let's bring it up to 11.8. And then we're going to say boom. And so now we're at the 3995. That's the maximum credit. Okay, what's the high end? So how, how high can my income go before I lose, before it goes back down again? Let's follow the table. I'm looking at the single. We're going to go down all the way down. It looks the same, the same, uh, same. And this is the same. And so to do, do, do all the way down. Sorry, I'm taking a long time here. But here we go, like 21, 21, 6 to uh, 21, 650. Then it starts to go back uh, down again. So let's put 21, 6 in here. So I'll say, okay, up to 21, 600 of income. <clears throat> and you can see the credit was the maximum is 3,995. So it's starting to go back down again. So now you can see page one, 21, 6,000 of income. So, so now being head of household is giving me a benefit because, because that I have the capacity, enough income to clear the 13,850 standard deduction. And even with the higher uh, deduction for the, for the head of household, I still have $800 I'm gonna actually have tax calculated on, but that only comes out to $81, but I'm still getting a benefit there from the better tax brackets of head of household. And then I can have part of that $81 wiped out by the child tax credit, the non-refundable portion, bringing the tax to zero and then get the, the refundable part of the child tax credit as well as the earned uh, income tax credit. Okay, so let, let me map this out over here. If I was to try to mirror this in our worksheet over here, we're gonna say, that the income is now, what did I say the income was? Page number one, uh, 21, six. So I'm gonna say income is 21, six, 21, six. And then we have the credits. So we have the credits for, for the child tax credit would be 2000, but it was limited to the amount of, uh, of tax, which was $81. So this one was limited, I'm just gonna say $81 to 81 here. And then we have the refundable portion of the credits for the child, for the, so the additional child tax credit was 1,600, I believe, because that's the max for there. And then the earned income tax credit do, 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 was, uh, was 3,985. So 3,985. 
Now, I could get more tricky with the software to kind of double check the calculations for the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit to help me with my data input to make sure that everything is being calculated properly, or I might be more dependent on the tax software to help me with those calculations when I double check my data input. Because remember, my idea with the data input is that I want to make sure that my income statement is correct. Usually that's part of the difficulty with especially higher income taxpayers. And then I'm going to let the software do some of these phase out calculations and whatnot and double check them. So my idea over here for many CPA firms will have a separate schedule to help me recreate the income statement in essence, and then depend on the software to a larger degree to do some of the calculations on the phase out and tax calculations, right? But so, but you can make more complex worksheets to kind of double check some of those calculations as well. But in any case, that comes up to 21.6. I'm gonna change my standard deduction to head of household now, 20,800. And then there's the 800 taxable income, which is on page number one. So there's the 800, 800, I think. <laughs> And then page two, calculating the tax, which is $81. I'll let the software calculate the tax of uh, $81. And then, uh, so, so this is the other credits, bringing the tax down to zero. And then we have these credits, which are adding up to 5585, which is the refund of the 5585. All right, so that's the general idea. And so I'm gonna say, okay, that's gonna be like our baseline case. So now let's imagine that we had two people uh, that got that got married, right? And, and so what's gonna to happen to this credit uh, if they get married and you had two people that are both maximizing, this is close to maximizing the credit and they're both close to the higher income side of things and they both have basically uh, one child. So that means you're gonna have married with two child which we'll take a look at more next time possibly, but let's just give a quick scenario on that one. So I'm gonna say, okay, what if we go back on over and we say now the filing status is gonna to go to married filing jointly. And we're gonna say that on the income side, let's add a W2, uh, another W2, W2, and say it's also going to be this is for the spouse we'll say this is 21600 and so everything's the same there and so if i and then i'm going to add another dependent so we're going to say dependents and we'll just say another dependent this is going to be uh number two good old number two dependent and we'll say the uh the date of birth 010120 uh, and we're going to say this is going to be the daughter just to switch things up so we'll say daughter and social security number uh, 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 uh. okay okay so now we've got adam and jane and they're now they've increased the status head of household to married filing joint and then they have two children now together. So the child tax credit marked off on both of them. Their income is now at the 43,200 because they were both in the same boat before with one child maximizing the earned income tax credit. So now the 43,200 increases their, their standard deduction to 27,700, which is what you would kind of expect because the standard deduction is doubled for married people who we would expect could possibly have double the income, although that's kind of not exactly likely, especially when you get to higher income taxpayers that they're going to have the exact even uh, income situation. On the lower income, I would say it's possibly more likely because you might have two people that are doing like minimum wage, for example, but if you get in a higher income, you would think the disparity is a more likely thing to happen. That's going to be the 15,500. And then on page two, we've got the tax calculation at the 1,553. Again, more favorable tax tables in that they doubled the tax tables, in essence, assuming that it's possible for 
the two people to have exactly the same you know income instead of having a one income uh, household. So then the child tax credit is at the 1,553 because that's the amount that's going to cover of the 2,000 bringing the tax down to zero. And then they still have the additional child tax credit, which we talked about in a prior presentation tied to the two children now, 2,447. And the earned income tax credit now is at the, the uh, 3,423. So, so notice that the 3420 it's not like everything doubled basically right because what happened is the when i when they got married the maximum has changed so the whole curve shifted but it didn't double like everything else did so so their income doubled because you had two people in the same situation that were maxing out at the 3995 of the earned income tax credit when they got married even if they maxed out it would still only be 3,995. And it's less likely that they're gonna get that if they're both on the higher end when they get married because the top income threshold doesn't double. It just goes up from 46, 560 to 53. So they're actually lower on the, on the amount of credit, the total credit and the credit doesn't double now that you have basically two people is just kind of the interesting thing. So in other words, if I went back on over here and I said, let's imagine we had two people in this situation. They would have got a refund. Uh, let me see. Let me reformat this. To, to, they would have got a refund between the two of them, 11170 But if they get married, now they, their total refund for married filing joint is 5870 as far as I can see. 5870 I did this pretty quickly. But that's just a rough... So that's a difference between of five thousand three hundred dollars, right? So that's kind of significant, right? A bit uh, of a difference, uh, which is which is again kind of an interesting situation with the low because because again everything else on the tax code other than these refundable credits seems to benefit people that get married, whereas sometimes these refundable credits actually might encourage people to get divorced or something or or you know uh so so which is kind of that's what it looks like to me now it's a little complex because of the interplay between the earned income tax credit and the uh and the and the child tax credit and so on but you know that's the scenario you could that i ran out here that's what i'm coming to in this quick scenario so Let's imagine a situation where they're still at the one child and they get married. So now let's say, let's say dependents, let's get rid of, of the second child and say we don't have the second child uh, and now they're married and let's go into the wages and let's keep the income the same as it was before, but now they're married uh, with one child instead of the two. And so if I go back on over, we can say, okay, so now we we're, we're married couple, increase on the filing status, but we only have one child. The income is the same because we're keeping it what it was maximizing out the credit that it had uh, before uh, with a single or head of household individual. <clears throat> and then we've got then the, the increase <clears throat> in the standard deduction now being significant because that does reduce the income down to zero. So, so the, the, it's basically double of the single status and it's higher than the head of household status. If I go to page two, there's no tax. That means that the increase in the tax tables in this scenario doesn't really help them because they're, they're not having any, they don't owe any tax at this point in time. So the doubling of the tax tables, which basically helps of course, higher income individuals isn't going to be helping the low income individuals in this case generally and you've got then no child tax credit that's above the line or on the non-refundable side they've got the 1600 of the additional child tax credit on the refundable side and then they've maxed out the earned income tax credit of uh, the 3995 so if i go back on over and compare that to our baseline case the two people before 
might like the second person might have got a credit of like six hundred dollars if they didn't have any children right because the maximum earned income credit they would have to have some income to get it but let's say they had like a six hundred dollars of earned income credit and th and that's it and they didn't owe any that's all they had right so then so then that would mean that between the two of them they would have had uh, uh, 600 dollars. So between the two of them, unmarried, they would have had uh, six thousand uh, one eighty five between the two of them if they filed separately. And now they have five thousand five ninety five. So five thousand five five nine five thousand five thousand five ninety five. So you have a difference of the five hundred and ninety. Uh, in that case, so so that one's you know closer of a scenario with the with the one children. If you have the two and two, then it becomes more significant. And so I think that kind of makes sense to me because the one person wasn't getting much because they had no children, and therefore, and then the, when they got married, the other okay. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna say okay. So that's that, and then. If they were married, then the question is, well, how high could the income go to max, max out the credit to keep it at that 3995? So if I go back on over, now we're, now we're looking at our tables here and we're looking at married filing joint. The max credit still maxes out at 3995. So let's see how high the income could go to keep it at that 3995. So we've got then married filing joint doo -doo -doo -doo, all the way down here to 3995. I should probably pause the video, but you, I'll let you see me struggle. So <laughs> it has to go up to like 28,200, I believe. So if I brought this over here to, to 28,200, uh, then the credit is now at the 3978 instead of 3995 and then it's going to start going back down so here's the higher end of the married of the married filing joint to get the maximum credit so we're at the 28200 which would mean that if married it's still almost being wiped out by the by the standard deduction 500 is the only income that we would have at that level $51 of tax is all that's being calculated given the favorable tax rates of married versus single. And then it's wiped out from the child tax credit from the one child, 1,600 still from the additional child tax credit for the one child and the earned income credit still close to maximizing uh, at the 3,978.